Let's continue our look at ions and start with chloride. You won't hear too much mention of chloride in the anatomy text, but remember that when you look at chloride channels in the cell membrane, they don't have gates. So the chloride can freely move through the cell membrane anytime it wants. And where it's going to be moving is following the sodium. Since most of the sodium is found in the outside extracellular environment, so is the chloride too. Water loves to follow those abundant solutes. Magnesium, you hear about this with enzyme production and such. Kidneys will hold on to it when you get low on it. And of course, they'll excrete any excess amounts. Potassium is a vitally important ion when you talk about things like membrane potentials. That's those electric charges on that cell membrane. The three abundant ions primarily responsible for that resting membrane potential are sodium, calcium, and potassium. And potassium is kept in the most narrow and balanced state. You can upset the balance of potassium pretty easy because you don't have near as much of that in the body as you do some of these other ions. And if it gets out of balance, you can see some problems with neurons and muscles because of a loss of those resting membrane potentials. And remember, one thing that aldosterone does is tell the kidneys to secrete the excess amounts. So if you get too much of it in the body, hyperkalemia, aldosterone will tell the kidneys to get rid of the excess. Hypokalemia be low levels of it. I want to upset this balance of potassium that cause big trouble with neurons and muscles, which are vital to you living minute to minute of every day. Looking at potassium on hyperkalemia. Again, that's where you have too much in the body. Cell trauma is responsible for this. If somebody loses a lot of cells at one time, remember when cells die, they lice. The contents spill out. Since most of the potassium is kept inside the cells, if a large number of them die at one time, the potassium spills out into the rest of the body, causing hyperkalemia. Burns over a large part of the body or crushing injuries are largely responsible for that. You might also not have the kidneys excrete enough. Low aldosterone levels would be a cause of that. You got hypokalemia, not enough potassium in the body. Alkalosis is one possible cause of this. There's often a shift of potassium into the cells in exchange for the hydrogen at that time. Maybe somebody's not consuming enough of it. Maybe the kidneys are losing too much. Looking at regulation of calcium ions. Again, this is another one responsible for resting membrane potentials. You need to keep it in the proper balance. You also think about how much of it's in bones and things such as that. Very important material here. Again, hyper is always too much and hypo is always too little. And if you look at what balances the calcium in our body, it's primarily the hormones, PTH, which is parathyroid hormone, and then calcitonin. Everything PTH does works to raise your blood calcium levels. So if you don't have enough calcium in the body, release the PTH. One thing it'll do is increase osteoclast activity. Remember, osteoclasts break down bone. They can do this to cause the release of calcium. So you break down bone, release the calcium in the blood. That'll work to raise your blood calcium levels up. You can also have PTH increasing the absorption of calcium at the small intestine. So when you eat it, it tells the cells of the small intestine to absorb it. Also tells the kidneys to reabsorb as much as you can because if you're low on it, you don't want to lose any more in the urine. And PTH will also increase vitamin D production. Vitamin D will also tell the cells of the small intestine to absorb calcium. Now, calcitonin works to lower your blood calcium levels. It does this by decreasing osteoclast activity. So if you decrease osteoclast activity, you're slowing the release of calcium. Kidneys get rid of the excess, and that'll balance everything out. When you look at the causes of hypocalcemia, Many people don't consume enough dairy products, which is where a lot of this calcium comes from. That would cause a nutritional deficiency. Maybe a person doesn't have enough PTH or vitamin D in the body. Small intestine cells won't absorb the calcium if you don't have those chemical signals there. Hypercalcemia. Maybe somebody's releasing too much PTH. Everything it does works to raise your blood calcium levels, and too much vitamin D could do the same. Looking at phosphate ions. Phosphates are important for different things. Think about ATP production in the cells. And there's also a very large amount of it needed to make bone. So when you look at the materials like phosphate, the kidneys are holding on to this just as much as they can at most times. But of course, a person can get hypophosphatemia, not enough of it in the body. 
often happens when you have reduced absorption. Maybe there's not enough vitamin D or PTH because that helps to absorb that material. Alcohol abuse can also lead to low phosphate levels. Hyperphosphatemia, renal failure, and you got the kidneys. They should be getting rid of excess. Maybe they're not. Chemotherapy will destroy a large number of cells, and that material will spill out of the cells in the body. And hyperparathyroidism will add to this too.